composer extraordinaire and my friend of many moons um we've known each other since 1995 don't tell everybody that no <laughs> i think we were before we were out of the womb oh nice <laughs> nice that works out really well yeah uh, but i wrote a tune on my album called blue salt so of course i'm drinking a blue salt margarita right now in honor of ein so ein uh explain to the interested folks why you named the tune blue salt well it's a fun story um i was doing something in new york i don't remember some sort of like panel thing and then i met up with you and um we ended up at a restaurant i don't remember the name of it it was um, called blue moon there we go and um we were actually just hanging out and it was actually the first time that i was going to meet john um John Fedchuk. John Fedchuk, who became your John Fedchuk now. And so yeah, we were gonna it was gonna be the first time that I was gonna meet John after you had just started dating him. And we ended up in a um in a restaurant and we had margaritas and they had blue salt on them. And that's really um where that came from. And I just like the idea of like tying in your sort of your New York residency or <laughs> the way that you ended up in New York meeting John, you know, becoming like you know, such a staple in New York music scene and, um, and in jazz and everything. And it just seems to come full circle because we always talk about the blue salt. And you took a photo of me with the margarita that I put inside one of my albums, but I did edit out the margarita because <laughs> I felt that was a very PG thing to do. <laughs> By the way, I heard that you get an international trombone week. Why do you get a whole week? Well, because the rest of the year is for all the other instruments. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ein, uh, you have three or four, three or four albums four, of your music out? Four of my, that's like all of my music. Mm -hmm. um, I've done some other stuff with other people, but three were with my own band. One was with a band in Italy um, and yeah, that's fully of my music. I've done some other stuff with other people, such as you. Um, and so it's always exciting to be able to do all sorts of different projects. But yeah, mainly, but mainly big band stuff. Did you start was the first sort of um, foray into writing um, when you used to arrange music for Blue Devils? That was kind of, in terms of like larger ensemble type of situations, you know, I used to do the stuff for the percussion um, the pit, the front ensemble, mm -hmm. um, where it became really more of a, like a slightly more formalized process. But, you know, ever since I was a kid, I always like wrote stuff, you know, on the piano, little piano songs. I wrote, I actually wanted to do like love songs and I want to be like a pop star. I didn't want to be a jazz musician. You know? still time. <laughs> but I wrote like, I remember I would write like love songs to like my boyfriends when I was like in, you know, in like eighth grade or something trying to woo them and stuff like that <laughs> maybe that's why all of your music is so personal it's because you're you're constantly still reaching for that you know that um sort of connection to make in the music because many of your tunes that for those people that are unfamiliar uh, many of your tunes are dedicated to or about somebody that you know in fact you even wrote a tune about my two dogs um uh and uh you've written a uh, tune about bob Bruckmeyer, um uh, who you studied with when you were at new england conservatory um and even our old uh junior college band director john baltester can you talk about just how you are inspired to sort of slap someone's name on there it's, it's funny because sometimes they're like there is intense of like um for a person or for people and sometimes it's really that i have to write this kind of a tune so it depends on like if i'm giving a commission it also depends of like i like to try to do a wide variety in my repertoire so like if i wrote a ballad last time then i need to write something angry and fast and in your face you know and then after that i'll do something in three four so i also think of those things but if there's specific people that i'm writing for 
then I try to draw inspiration from from them, you know, like even when I wrote for Mr. and Dudley, but it was to it was a feature for John Fedchok. And also, but I also love that you're you were there and playing the bass trombone. So I wanted that duet in there. And I could just sort of picture like just going for the walks and that sort of a thing with the dogs. And that's what it's meant to be is like a little walk in the park. Otherwise, it's like it's funny because there's a bunch of stuff for Brookmeyer for several reasons. Um, one of it is when when I was studying with him and there were certain techniques, and I'm like, okay, this is a very Brookmeyer-ish type of thing that I'm writing. And then it happened that I had a couple of, I had a, a commission that was specifically asking me to write something that emulated Bob. Um, and that's also because at that school they had um, a valve trombonist who also emulated Bob. So there, there are lots of things like that that happen. But sometimes I just, I just write. <laughs> and I figure it out later. <laughs> I remember when we were in the practice rooms at Los Medanos College, and I used to ask you to play me. And I meant like play music that reminded you of me. So I, I think it's so cool to finally actually be able to pay you to <laughs> <laughs> write something that was, I mean, it's that, I mean, you want to talk full circle. That was a uh, full circle right there well the thing i was gonna say was like on this album i think i am the person who has known you the longest yes and i'm the shortest person i bet <laughs> i think um everybody but john and alan is shorter than me <laughs> wow well <laughs> we're gonna I... organize the album by height <laughs> <laughs> can you uh tell me so you wrote for bone gasm for trombones and rhythm section uh what has been sort of um some other interesting like forms of ensembles that you've written for yeah so um other than big band obviously but um one project that i worked on was with um, mitch hoppers who's a guitarist and he wrote four suites um that were <laughs> or four movement suites rather that he he had these little piano pieces and he wanted them orchestrated. And so I orchestrated them for various different types of um, little chamber groups that would have like, you know, I think we have like a, a string quartet, and, but we also added some like other horns and that sort of, with, or winds rather, horns, or, uh, but like oboe or, um, you know, there's some flute and like the last movement was like a uh, the jazziest of them all, but then I had to rearrange them um, and, and sort of chop it up for like six horns. And actually one of the funnest ones he had me do on there, it's kind of like this bossa type of a vibe. And I did it and he's like, we got Bob Mincer on it and he can do all sorts of overdubs. And so I did it so that there were like four different woodwinds on it, <laughs> like, and playing like solis and stuff, you know, with him like alto flute, flute, bass, clarinet. And <clears throat> I think even clarinet and it's like the guitar and rhythm section is very different and it's just sort of freeing. So I, I love venturing out. I know that someone has a, a couple people approach me about doing wind ensemble and that would be a blast to the past because obviously we were in wind ensemble together. And, you know, it's funny the people that don't know the things that you've done before where you are today and like people in the past, how they know me is like percussionists and pianists, I'm, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> But the, I get excited in being able to do something that I've done in the past, like, or have a relationship to from the past. Mm -hmm. I know uh, your relationship with the trombone <laughs> has been an interesting one. Did you find any difficulty writing for my band? Well, here, okay, so let's do a little history lesson first. Um, the fact of the matter that, like, John Maltester, right, trombonist mm -hmm. over at LMC, Dave Eshelman, trombonist, over at Cal State Hayward, now Cal State East Bay. And then of course, Bob Brookmeyer, trombonist. Um, so these were the, like some of the, the biggest like influences in my life um, in terms of jazz and music, and they're all trombonists. So there's- Did you say that with a pained look on your face? <laughs> there's an irony to that, I guess, though. But <laughs> no, it's all totally awesome. Um, and actually it was funny because I approached your, your piece and I, I, and I will say for the record, I want to write more about gas and music that we need to spread that love around the world in terms of trombone repertoire. Um, 
And so my approach to that was, was I wanted to do things that were fun for trombones, um, you know, and, and not having like, cause traditionally in the big band, the trombones are like, oh, you're the comping people. And this time I really want it to be like, what are the things that trombones do that, you know, nobody else does. And, um, so that was important to me. And then I spoke with, um, my husband, Jeff Clausen, who is a trumpet player and our approaches to writing are so different because it would actually comes from the fact that he's a horn player and I'm a pianist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so he is great at just like, um, really utilizing the winds in the band. And so we were just, you know, I actually bounced some stuff off of him, you know, and like the fact that I wrote like some falls at the end, it's like, it's not something I would normally do. And then the last priority was to make sure to feature you, the leader of the group, and to give some serious bass trombone love because it's like, like what sort of things can I can I do for you that, um, that you know that doesn't really exist in the tr bass trombone repertoire, um, you know, and also to give you like a, a melodic voice, um, as well as giving you all the fun little babs and blats at the bottom and bass lines <laughs> and things like that. So. That was just part of my goal was to sort of give you a little b like bass trombone joy and hopefully trombone joy in general. Um, I, I think, I, I mean, it's part of the reason why I formed the band. I mean, part of the, the I guess the, um, the point of forming the band was to encourage composers, much like yourself, that sort of use the trombone in a very specific way to say, okay, well, like, what if you only had trombone to work with? What would you do then? everybody really brought it and uh your tune specifically was one it was challenging which was always fun it's always fun to play a challenging tune um and two it was really interesting for me to play and it i hope like you didn't get irritated because there are a couple um things that we changed on everybody's tune when uh, when we got it but you wrote you wrote the solo not my solo, but you wrote the the other trombone solo in a different part. And I was like, as soon as I heard you, so we did this remote recording um, to sort of rehearse for our album. And as soon as I heard the tune, I was like, John is soloing on that. <laughs> and, I was, and it's not that I, I was going against, you know, kind of your vision for whoever would solo, but as soon as I heard, there's very few things in, in music that I am so sure about and mm -hmm. I was sure about that as soon as I heard your tune and um uh can you was was that cool I guess this is a terrible question <laughs> to ask. well it's too late now right no I'm kidding <laughs> no I you know I I mean you know me you know the kind of person I am and I really if I am working for someone specific I want them to be happy and you're that way too it's really interesting because you, when you did a master class with my with you know over with one of my classes you're like what what your job is what you want is to the composer to be happy or the arranger or, the, or whoever whatever ensemble that you're playing for and that you feel it is your job to execute to the you know at the best level that you can possibly can um and you're the one you're my boss in this sense you commission me so it's i always it's get yours. so so like worried that the composer is going to be like oh, i hate that gen lady <laughs> No. <laughs> well, I, you know, again, it's like, if that was the case, like if I didn't write something that was, I don't know, that you enjoyed or then, or, or, you know, that you, that you like or something, I feel like I didn't do my job. And that's, that's really, really it. So you I will did your damn job. <laughs> I will say one thing though, is getting a little cross-eyed because the one thing that doesn't happen that much is to write for trombones and then with the, there's so many ledger lines above the staff but when you're doing it for jazz musicians because and but don't like clefs we don't like i know clefs. but yeah. with but with the caliber of your of your band that i wouldn't give this to like some a bunch of high school you know what I'm saying? and so, so so it was so funny after a while you're like I want to put a treble clef in there, but you're not, go I'm not going to. So but it's just all these ledger lines that I was looking at the parts today, even I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my eyes are like, ah. So yeah, after a while, I was like making sure I was counting the right number of lines. It's like, oh. Yeah. John, I remember there was a discussion not too long ago um, about um, using clefs like alto and tenor clef, because it's, I mean, while jazz musicians are used to saying 
treble clef, you, you know, just from reading head charts. Um, people that do both are like, oh, it's fine if it's written in alto or tenor clef. And most jazz musicians can read those because we use them. Well, I use uh, tenor clef to transpose B flat music. But, um, but John said, uh, tenor clef doesn't swing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the perfect, I'm stealing that. Yeah. That is so perfect because yeah, yeah that yeah, I, I have students sometimes who have not who could not completely understand the difference between writing for orchestral players and you know versus like jazz musicians. I'm like, you gotta count the ledger lines. Well, think about me, you know, I'm I'm under the staff, you know, uh, as many ledger lines as you're putting over the staff. So sometimes I get confused down there. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all your thoughts with us about writing for Bungasm. Um, the tune Blue Salt is one of my favorites and it's been played a lot on the radio already. And I always get a kick when I see my hometown jazz station, uh, KCSM, uh, playing playing music from the album. I tried to let every, every one of the uh, radio stations know that I was from the East Bay. So hopefully uh they'll give give me a little preferential treatment for a minute <laughs> everybody needs to buy this album no. buy it buy it buy it buy it don't do this clicking thing just buy it get up your great rules i love your face love your face